So, you want to develop your application in Entity Framework Code First Style, but you have an existing database with like 300 tables and you don't really want to write 300 entities by hand. You'd rather jumpstart the process with uh, some Code First Entity classes that are generated from the database schema. And then after that, you've got your first set of classes and you just want to throw away that EDMX and never see the EDM designer again. Thank you very much. Well, you can do that with DevForce. We call that process code second, and this video shows you how. Hi, I'm Ward Bell, VP of Technology at IdeaBlade, and I'm ready to demonstrate DevForce code second from scratch using that familiar IdeaBlade tutorial database we call Northwind IB. We'll build a uh, Hello World Silverlight application. The steps are essentially the same if you were building a WPF or Windows Forms or some other kind of web app. You'll see me build the uh, Entity Framework model in a database first style as we've done in previous demos, but there's a difference. Uh, this time we're going to generate uh, code first classes using a completely different DevForce template called the code first template. Uh, we're going to then take that generated code and set it aside and throw that EDMX away, never to be seen again. And then we're going to make a few other minor adjustments. We've got to add a CF marker file that tells DevForce how to build the project code first style. And uh, we've got to convert that database connection string so it's a regular SQL connection string. And then we're going to try it. Let's go. From a clean slate, we'll go File, New Project. And from the DevForce 20 templates, we'll do a Silverlight application. And we'll call it DF Code Second Demo. The template finishes generating, and we're going to delete these README first files that come with a template. And now we add an entity model to the web project like we would with data first. We're going to find the ADO template, pick the database first ADO entity model. And we're going to generate from the database, and I've already got Northwind IB tutorial here, but if you didn't, you'd press New Connection, look in local host, and hopefully in the combo box you would find Northwind IB. But I've already done this, so everything's cool. I'll just say Next, and I'll pick some of the standard tables that will become entities here, the standard demo tables. And say Finish. And there's the EDM Designer Canvas with our entities. Over in the Model Browser, we'll select the Northwind IB Model node. And down in the Properties window, we'll find the DevForce Template property. And you'll see that it's now set standard. We're going to switch it to the Code First Code Gen template. We save, and DevForce generates our Code First classes in background. Now we've got to add another DevForce item here. It's called the DevForce Code First file. We'll call it Model 1 to match our model name. As you see, it's just a bunch of text. This is a marker file that triggers DevForce code first behavior. It's just a CF file sitting in our web project for the DevForce build process defined. Note that as a side effect in references, it added the Entity Framework assembly, specifically the 4.1 version of Entity Framework, which you must have previously installed. The generated code first entity classes are sitting under the TT file, just like generated data first classes, and they're still linked from the Silverlight app project as before. We're going to get rid of, rid of them, but first we're going to copy the generated code, and we'll create a new independent class file. We'll call it model1. And then we'll blow away the text from that, and we'll paste in the copied code. Scrolling to the top, notice the Silverlight shim code. That has to be present in any entity class file that will be shared with a Silverlight project. Now we can delete the EDMX and DevForce TT files because we won't be using the designer or data first development again in this app. We're code first from now on. Delete that link that no longer exists and we're going to add a new link to the model one CS file we just created, so we gotta go find it in the web project. Remember to add as link, don't just click the add button. There it is. Okay, now we have to fix the connection string, which is in the web config. We found it. 
we'll make a copy of it and we'll comment out the copy and then we're going to get rid of all of that entity framework metadata jazz and turn this into a real connection string uh, we gotta replace entity client with SQL client and that's all we have to do there we can just build That succeeded. Notice that DevForce generated the Northwind IB Entities IBMMX file from the Code First classes. This holds essential metadata in XML about the model and it was provided by the entity framework itself. We need that metadata up in the Silverlight application too, so DevForce added a link to it and we'll just move that up next to model for cleanliness. We're done with the web project for now and we're ready to try it out. And we'll do that in the code behind of the main Silverlight page. We'll add a loaded event handler. This is quick and dirty folks. Clean that up. Now I'll just paste in some prepared test code here. Okay, this is standard stuff now. We knew up our models entity manager this is Silverlight, so we'll fetch all employees asynchronously using a callback style. If the operation completed successfully, we'll pass the query results to our success method. If it failed, we'll throw the query exception. Let's breakpoint that. Here's our success method. We're not doing anything with the results, We're just setting a breakpoint. F5 to build and run. There's our dummy screen and then our breakpoint. And success! We have employees. And that's all there is to it. Follow the link on your screen to read about Code Second in more detail at the DevForce Resource Center. Visit us anytime at www.ideablade.com and thanks for watching.